Ever wanted to understand guitar or bass electronics but didn't want to have to get a degree? Then this series is for you. Hi, this is Ted Burmis, and this is episode 6 of Guitar and Bass Electronics Simplified. In this episode, we're going to talk about tone controls. In particular, we're talking about passive tone controls, ones that don't have a power source like a battery. From our previous videos talking about magnetic pickups, we know that wire is used extensively to make them. The wire used for a typical pickup is extremely thin and has a small resistance per inch. Due to a large number of winds of the wire around the magnets in the pickups, 10,000 winds is not unheard of. This can add up to a rather large resistance. Though it can vary due to many factors, 10K ohms or 10,000 ohms is a good value for us to use. If you're not familiar with ohms and measuring it, I suggest going back through the playlist for our video on volume controls. To understand tone controls, we need to introduce some new concepts. First, let's discuss frequency response plots. A frequency response plot has two axes. The left here is magnitude or amplitude, and the bottom is frequency. There are various ways to measure amplitude, but you'll usually hear the term dB or decibels. It's simply a measurement unit like inches or miles. For frequency units, you will hear the term hertz, abbreviated as hz, or cycles per second. Let's show what this plot looks like for two different pure sine waves. The first may be familiar to a lot of you. It is 440 hertz, also known as A440. It's used on tuning forks the world over and used for tuning guitars, basses, various orchestra instruments. Here's what it looks like on our plot and what it sounds like. Let's contrast that with one kilohertz. Notice that it goes more to the right on the plot and what it sounds like. The second item we need to discuss are capacitors. A capacitor, also known as a cap, is an electronic component and can be thought of in simplistic terms as a frequency dependent resistor. The impedance of a capacitor is called reactance and is analogous to resistance in a resistor. In fact, reactance is measured in ohms just like resistance is for a resistor. Reactance is defined by the equation 1 over 2 pi times f times c, where pi is 3.14 approximately, and f is the frequency in hertz. c is the capacitance in farads. Plugging into this equation with the typical cap value of 0.047 microfarads, we see that the reactance of the cap at 1 hertz is 3.4 mega ohms, which is rather large, and at 10 kilohertz, about 340 ohms, which is rather small. Thus, at low frequencies, the capacitor has a high reactance, and at high frequencies, a low reactance. Let's use frequency response plots and capacitors to discuss another important concept, the low pass filter. Let's look at this circuit consisting of a pickup and cap to see the frequency response plot. We'll replace the pickup with an ideal voltage source in series with a 10K ohm resistor. Let's add a switch that can add or subtract the capacitor to the circuit. Intuitively, if the switch is open, the capacitor has no effect and the output from the pickup is essentially unchanged. The plot shows the result. Note that 0 dB can be interpreted as the output is the same as the input voltage. Now let's close the switch, which creates a low-pass filter. The signal at this node out can be found by treating the circuit like a voltage divider from the volume control video. Here is a frequency response plot of the output. At low frequencies, the cap has little effect on the output because its reactance is high at low frequencies. Thus, most of the signal from the voltage source is available at the output here. At higher frequencies, the cap essentially becomes a short. Using the same voltage divider analogy, we know that combined with the 10K ohm resistor, this is going to give a lower and lower output as shown here. The area around the inflection point here 
is known as the corner frequency. It's actually negative three dB down by definition and is controlled by the resistance of the pickup and the reactance of the capacitance. The equation for the corner frequency in this circuit is defined as one over two pi times R times C. If you were to plug in the numbers for our components into this equation, you would find that we have 340 Hertz as our corner frequency. To give the musician more control of the tone circuit than a switch can provide, we need a variable component. We'll use the pot just like in our volume control video. To understand the influence the pot has on the tone circuit, let's use the following circuit to analyze the effect. In this schematic, the circuit consists of an ideal voltage source and three independent sections. The first has a tone control section. The second has the tone control, but with the capacitor removed. And the third has the tone control section, but with no pot. Notice that all three sections share the same common component values. I use a resistor with a variable R pot to represent the pot's variable resistance. First, let's look at the circuit with no pot. Note that this is essentially our low pass filter circuit with the switch closed discussed a few minutes ago with a 340 Hertz corner frequency. The frequency response is shown here. Let's look at the tone control with no cap. Let's set the pot to 1K ohms and investigate the effect. You may recognize this circuit from our video on voltage controls. This is simply a voltage divider circuit. You can look up the theory, but the output is the ratio of the resistance to ground or pot and the total resistance R pot plus 10K. The frequency response is shown here. Notice that it is flat again. Something interesting happens when we combine both the pot and the cap to make our tone control section. As shown in the next plot, it is essentially the combination of the low pass filter plot and the voltage divider plot. This is important, so I'll say it once again. It is essentially the combination of the low pass filter plot and the voltage divider plot. Let's look at the actual circuit with the tone knob on the pot and see how the frequency response plot moves. In summary, the passive tone control circuit allows the musician to dial in how much of the pickup's high frequency output is attenuated. The circuit is highly dependent on the output resistance of the pickup, the value of the tone cap, and the setting of the tone pot. And that is how a tone circuit works on 90% of passive tone controls. Mm -hmm.